What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, H-A-W-G sports.com. Well, Arkansas just wrapped up the second major scrimmage of the spring, and there are 10 practices in, so just a few more practices to go, everything culminating, obviously, with the red-white game on April 17th. And there's a whole lot of activity going on right now in the basketball transfer market. We're going to talk about that and more. We're going to take your questions also, all that and more on Hog Sports Live. And before we get started, of course, I want to remind you there's plenty of ways to watch and listen. Hold on real quick. Where's my promo? Plenty of ways to watch and listen. Of course, you can always tune in on Facebook Live. Be sure to throw us a like there if you haven't done so already. Be sure to follow the page so you're uh, notified anytime we add these videos. And, of course, all the content, the free content and stuff that we uh, add to our Facebook page. Also available on YouTube. Be sure to throw us a thumbs up there as well if you like the content. Share the content with somebody you think might like it. Subscribe to the YouTube page. Hit the notifications bell so you're notified anytime we upload new videos. Also available on Apple Podcasts. Uh, be sure to throw us a five-star rating there and leave a review so others know what to expect. Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere else you can think of to find your favorite podcast. Be sure to sign up for free text alerts at hogsports.com. Just go to the top right of the page and you'll see where to sign up. And you can also sign up for our Hogsports Arkansas Daily Newsletter where we send all of our free content, a little, little VIP stuff, but mostly free Razorback content each morning to your email inbox. All right, thanks for listening to that. So... I want to talk about spring football, but first, there's so much stuff going on with the transfer market, and uh, also Curtis is is off this week, so he's um, he's been on the road since March 11th, so he, he needs a he needs a little bit of time. Uh, so we're going to try to make sure we get your basketball fix in uh, today on Hog Sports Live, since we're not having Hog Hoops Lives. Obviously, uh, Desi Sills on March 31st entered the transfer portal. A little bit of a surprise being an Arkansas guy from Jonesboro. kind of thought he would, no matter what happened, uh, that he would end his career at Arkansas. But I can certainly see with, uh, you know, the players that Arkansas has coming in, who's coming back next year, how things went this season that maybe he just wants to play, you know, and uh, and certainly can't blame him for that. So good luck to Desi Sills. Thanks for what you did while you were here in Fayetteville. Preseason All-SEC second team pick. Um, but obviously didn't work out that way this season. But good luck to Desi Sills. So just in the transfer market, obviously Arkansas added a lot of help last year. I mean, this team isn't the same without Jalen Tate and Justin Smith. And Vance Jackson, you know, things didn't work out the same way for him at Arkansas. But he there were still some moments early in the season and stuff. But, um, no, didn't happen the same way. We're expecting all of those guys to move on, obviously. So uh, they'll move on to the next stage of their careers. Justin Smith maybe has a shot at the NBA. I don't know about Tate and that. But, you know, can play professionally on some kind of level. So good luck to those guys. You know, Arkansas also had some other players in the transfer mark. You know, those were all grad transfers that Arkansas added. But they'd also had, you know, J.D. Note, Abiyami Iola, who we didn't see last year. Um uh, Connor Vanover is another one that, that came to Arkansas and were sit one guys too. And we'll see how things work with the transfer waivers and all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, I thought Curtis Wilkerson had a good story the other day just on impact additions that are already with the team. And, you know, Abiyami Iola, again, is another guy that we don't know a whole lot about. You know, what kind of – I mean, 6'9", he's a big kid, but he tore his ACL, only played – briefly in one game and just kind of a, you know, just to get him in a game kind of deal. Wasn't ever really fully healthy. So, but, uh, you know, the main guys that he talks about here, uh, returning KK Robinson, who had the foot injury. I saw a video of KK uh, in Indianapolis. I think he made 12, I don't know who shot the video, but 12 of 13 threes with, you know, standing on one leg. He just recently got the boot off, but he's a very fast Good shooter. I mean, a guy that can really do a lot of things for you. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of impact that he has next year. And Kamani Johnson. You know, Kamani Johnson, transfer from ULR, had to sit out this past year. What is he, 6'7", 215. Musselman says that he's got to, like, calm him down in practice because he's going to injure people. So he's a guy that loves to take it to the rack. Um, you know, a guy that could obviously get him to the bonus fairly soon. So he, he's an interesting player to me. Averaged 11 points per game, 6.7 rebounds at ULR in 2019-20. Obviously set out last season. 
but an interesting player. So that's one addition right there. Um, you have a couple of uh, a couple of guys coming in in Chance Moore and Aqual. I don't know how to say his name, but um, Chance Moore, six five, one ninety five, number eighty nine ranked prospect in the country, four star out of Georgia, and my Wayne. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right again. 6'10", 205. I got to get Curtis to enunciate, pronunciate that for me. Uh, 6'10", 205. So a guy who's number five ranked junior college prospect in the country. So those are the guys coming in there. And Audis Tony, uh, 6'6", 190, who recently announced for Arkansas, uh, formerly of Pitt. This is a guy that averaged 15.1 points per game last season. In 16 games, or excuse me, 14.4. That was home games. 14.4 points per game last season, 5.9 rebounds, 2.3 assists, 6'6, 210 pounds. A guy who can get up. I'm looking at his highlights right now. He can he can flush it. <laughs> so he's got some hops. So looks like he's a really nice addition, originally out of Huntsville, Alabama. Related to some former or current Alabama players, Petty, I believe, is uh, his, a cousin of his. So that puts Arkansas right now at six scholarship players on, at guard and six scholarship players at forward. So a total of 12, and that's including Moses Moody, who we're obviously thinking Moses is going to move on, right? I mean, it's not guaranteed, but it, likely Moses Moody is going to move on. So a couple of spots left, and that is crazy when you think about how many guys are out there in the transfer market. Chris likes, first of all. This guy's deciding on Wednesday. Okay, it's, it's between Arkansas and USC. Small point guard, 5'7", electric. He was injured uh, to start the game, uh, but got off to a great start. Uh, excuse me, to start the season, but got off to a great start. 15.5 points a game, 5.5 assists uh, just in two games this year. The previous year, 15.4 2.1 rebounds, 2.4 assists. The year before that, 16.2 points, 3.2 assists, 2.7 rebounds. So this is a guy that is smaller, obviously, but ultra productive. Good three-point shooter, 36.4%. That's about what Moses Moody shot this year from three. And he's deciding on Wednesday between Arkansas and USC. He's originally from Maryland. Marion Jackson is another one. Toledo transfer, another guard. 18 points, six boards, six assists this past season. Arkansas, Arizona State, Georgetown, Miami. So Marion Jones. When is he deciding? Next few days is all we know on him. Not a specific. Marion Jackson, I believe, is Friday when he's deciding. Is that right? Let me see. Yeah, Marion Jackson on Friday, Toledo. 6'1", 200, another guard, 18.1 points, 6.1 rebounds, 5.9 assists. Not a great three-point shooter, but pretty good. I mean, good enough, 34.8%. I mean, that's still pretty good, I guess, in this day and age with everything being pushed back a little bit. He's not a 40% guy, but neither was Moses Moody. 6'1", 200 out of Toledo. Again, deciding fairly soon. That's Mary, Marion Jackson. Marion Jones, 6'3", 170, next few days out of Penn State. Is that right? A lot of Marions, a lot of Masons, a lot of Mileses out there. <laughs> Very popular names for this age group. Let's see. Yeah, Marion Jones deciding on Friday. Okay. And Marion Jones out of Penn State is, uh, what is he, 15 points a game, 15.3, 2.72 assists. Okay. Uh, Xavier Pinson is another one, has Arkansas in his top four. Obviously, you know him from Missouri. He averages like 23 points a game against Arkansas. And last season averaged total 13.6 points per game. An 83% free throw shooter. Very quick player. But – He's another guy to keep an eye on. He's down to Arkansas, Auburn, Georgia, and Nebraska. So three SEC teams in his final group. Stanley Amude out of South Dakota, another guy to watch. It's looking maybe a little Kansasy for him from what crystal balls and stuff. But this is a guy that averaged 21.6 points, seven rebounds, three assists per game. 
I believe he's 6'7", Amude, 6'6", 210. So, but a lot of people are saying Kansas for him, for Amude. The same deal with Christian Bishop, 6'7", 220. Out of Creighton, 11 points, 6.4. I'm not saying, like, that's for sure that they're going to Kansas, but that's that's kind of been the whispers, I guess. Damari Monsato, Monsato genetically modified crops, <laughs> feeding the world. So, East Tennessee State, 6'6", 225, averaging 11.8 points, 7.3 rebounds, almost an assist per game. 35.4% free th- uh, three-point shooter. It's crazy. I mean, there's so there's over – Jaden Gardner is another one. Don't know as much about what's going on with him. East Carolina, 18.3 points, 8.3 rebounds, 6'7", 235. I mean, that's – I mean, there's probably more, but that seems like the guys that are being discussed mostly when it comes to Arkansas. And, again, a couple of spots left considering that Moody will go. And who knows what else will happen with this roster. But um, – there is so much talent out there. And Musselman is right. It used to be where, like, the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th guy on a roster would enter the – you know, become available in the transfer market. And now it's stars for other teams. It's the second leading scorer or the leading scorer. And especially, like, guys in these, you know, like non-Power 6 group, some of these guys, you know, are just dominate their conference, like player of the year type of stuff in their conference. And we saw that, you know, with J.D. Note, a son, freshman of the year. Um, you know, so, like, there are some really good players out there in the transfer market, and Musselman has been ahead of the curve on all this. But even him, you know, his knowledge and his background, I don't know if he's seen anything like what we're seeing now as far as transfers. Do you like that? Do you think it's good for college basketball? I mean, it used to be like – you get a guy, and then, you know, if he's really good, you, you're going to keep him for three years, and he's going to go pro when he's a junior, maybe two. And, you know, everybody else is staying four years. You might lose a guy here and there, but it's nothing like it is now. I mean, it's just free agency, wild, wild west transfer market. Football hasn't really hit anything like this yet. You know, football is still very much in the mode of players transferring who are backups or reserves. You know, quarterbacks has has really been the gem for a lot of teams in transfer market. I mean, when you look at the Heisman Trophy, not last year with Devontae Smith, but previously the last three years been transfer quarterbacks. The year before that was three finals or transfer quarterbacks. Um, and, you know, other players you see, you know, like Arkansas brought in Levi Draper, you know, a guy that um, has some potential but, you know, was kind of, you know, back on the depth chart at OU. Uh, Xavier Kelly, who was deep on the depth chart at Clemson. You know, guys who needed another position, needed, needed to find a place where they needed to, you know, ne- maybe had a little bit of depth concerns and uh, and wound up at Arkansas. But aside from quarterback, that's kind of how it's been for football, at, you know, really across the country. You don't, you don't see a lot of big-name transfers at other positions other than quarterback. Um, but basketball, it's you can go out and build yourself a roster real quick. And Arkansas – has developed some notoriety in a short amount of time with Musselman, partially because of the Elite Eight run, in a big way the Elite Eight run, but also Musselman just, you know, his NBA background and really his background overall, the staff's background, all of that stuff is helping Arkansas. They're going to keep on – I mean, I I really feel like this is the beginning for Razorback basketball. I really do. And I'm not saying like a Final Four is in the future, but knocking at the door – Knocking at the doors at the future, it's, it takes so much, you know, luck, great draw, all that kind of stuff to – I mean, look at look at Gonzaga. I mean, it, it took a bank shot three-quarter – not three-quarter, two – not half-court, whatever's inside of that. 35-foot <laughs> whatever shot, uh, you know, to, ten, to send them to the next round. I mean, that's how it is in the NCAA tournament. I love the looks of UCLA, by the way. I'd, I'd kind of adopted them since Arkansas got bounced. I just – I love the variety of player, this, the different looks. on It looked like it was like they had a casting call to put together a basketball team. So, I enjoyed following them. But um, it was a great run. But um, Gonzaga, Baylor. I've got Gonzaga – so, I filled out – people are against this sometimes, like filling out different brackets and stuff. So, I filled out like four brackets, neighborhood bracket, hog sports bracket, couple other brackets and uh I fill them out like that just to 
and I always like pick one winner, so I had Gonzaga winning on every bracket and different variations. Unfortunately, I, I'm winning a bracket that had 400 entries, and as long as Gonzaga wins, then I'll win it. But the the prize, is, it's a bracket that I set up. The prize is a one-year membership to Hog Sports, which is great for you, but me, since I own the company, it's not that big a deal. <laughs> Why didn't I enter it in the big money brackets? But um, anyway, I, that's the way the world works, I guess. But um, that is my main bracket, and it's, it's pretty strong right now. I've got three of the final four. Uh, Houston, I had th- Houston, well, everybody but UCLA in the final four. I think I had Alabama was my other team. And both of the championships, I've got Arcan- uh, Arkansas. I've got uh, Gonzaga over Baylor right now in the championship game. But I feel like Baylor's going to win tonight. That's my call. I'm calling Baylor to upset. Is that an upset? I mean, it's two one seeds. I guess Gonzaga's the number one overall and undefeated, so I guess they're the favorite. But I don't know if I'd call it an upset if either one of them won. But I feel like Baylor may beat them. It's going to be close. I mean, it could be 50-50. You know, just looking ahead for basketball recruiting, you got Joseph Pinion, who's already committed out of Moralton, 6'6", 180 wing. You know, Nick Smith It's such a great class in 2022 if I didn't mention that. Nick Smith, 6'4", 170. I don't know that he's going to end up at Arkansas, out of Sylvan Hills, out of Sherwood, Sylvan Hills High School. But, you know, Auburn, North Carolina, Kentucky are schools that are up there for him. But that's not a, a slam dunk for Arkansas, I don't think, by any chance. Uh, there's a great little write-up uh, from Eric Bossy, our National Hoops recruiting guy. Monday Dish, closing thoughts from the Swish and Dish. It's a recent tournament in Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin, where he saw Nick Smith and just kind of offers his thoughts. He's, I mean, it's a good – probably like 300 words or so just on Nick Smith here and several other prospects, but uh, a nice breakdown for you hoops nuts out there. Khalil Ware um, out of North Little Rock also has Arkansas uh, among his favorites. He's got uh, Auburn, Missouri, Oral Roberts, Texas, Virginia – Tech, Virginia Tech, Kansas, Texas A&M, Oklahoma State, and Florida are his favorites right now. He is obviously well-regarded. He is ranked the number 32 player in the country on 24-7 sports. On the composite, he's number 67. So some other places have him a little bit higher. I think Nick Smith is 25 overall nationally on 24-7 sports. But – 6'11", 210, Khalil Ware out of North Little Rock. Recently came out with his top, what is that, eight schools or so? 2022 prospect. JV and Guy King also has Arkansas offer out of Mills. Creed Williamson out of Little Rock Christian also, 6'8", 200, Corliss Williamson's son. Uh, and jumping ahead, this is another one from the Swish and Dish from Eric Bossy. All the way to 2024, Dallas Thomas is a guy to keep an eye on. Um Let's see here. Dallas Thomas, 6'7", 170 at a Little Rock Parkview, who has Missouri State, St. John's, TCU, Tulsa as early offers. But an intriguing guy to – I mean, again, class of 2024, so that's that's a little bit down the road. We're talking 2022 guys here. We're talking 2021 transfers right now. So you guys can go ahead and get your questions in too, but we're going to jump over to football. I hope that helped with Curtis Wilkerson being out this week. I hope that allowed you to get your fix a little bit. And congratulations also, I haven't said, to the Razorback basketball team for their Elite Eight appearance. More good things to come, I think, for Eric Musselman and this uh, Razorback basketball team as the roster turns a little bit and some more players get added in. So, all right. Saturday, Razorback scrimmage extravaganza is how we title it every time after Arkansas's uh, big scrimmage. This is the second major scrimmage. They had 119 plays, not including any special team plays. Wasn't an incredible day for the quarterbacks. Let's just go ahead and say that. Now, you also have to factor in, even though K.J. Jefferson was 13 of 22 passing, which obviously isn't going to, like, blow anybody away. 13 of 22 passing, um, but it's still 59.1%, but only 80 yards and a touchdown. So, 3.6 yards per completion, not very impressive. However... This is a penalty that was called twice. You don't see a legal receiver downfield, lineman downfield. You don't see that very often in this day of RPO. In fact, it's something that they should call and they don't. 
but they caught it twice on Arkansas. And one of them was on a 75-yard bomb to Mike Woods. And, I mean, it was a beauty. I mean, it was kind of like – think about the pass to Traylon Burks against Missouri, but it was on the opposite side of the field. Perfectly thrown, 75-yard touchdown bomb. He, he completes that, and he's suddenly 14 to 23, 61%, 155 yards, two touchdowns, seven yards per completion. Obviously, that looks a lot better, doesn't it? So, one play right there uh, kind of messed up the stats a little bit for K.J. Jefferson. But, what I mean, it, 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 to me, it's hard to, like, completely judge K.J. and Malik Hornsby, uh, Lucas Coley, too, because they are so elusive and there's such early whistles. I don't know that we'll ever really see, like, a guy like Malik Hornsby, what he's totally capable of until we see him in a game where it's live bullets. Because there was – like there's one pass he throws to the end zone, he's called down, you know. He could he would have gotten away from the defender, but you don't want to risk him getting hit, right. What I see from Malik Hornsby, what is he, 6'2", 183? He might be up to 190 right now. But what I see from Malik Hornsby is – really impressive speed. I see so many quarterbacks that are labeled like dual threat quarterback because they can kind of run. They're kind of mobile. Hornsby has jets. Like he, when he decides to turn it up, it's just like, I mean, it's a real burst of explosion and reminds me a little bit of Nick Marshall in that, in that sense. He was only nine of 24 for 114 yards of the pick. So that's like, we're talking like 30 something percent there. Not very impressive from a statistical standpoint. He did, However, lead Arkansas in rushing, 11 carries for 47 yards. And, again, a, a quick whistle. There were times where he's weaving through traffic, and it's an early whistle. And he might have broken it off for a long run. When he decides to turn it up, it is zoom. And it's not like some of these guys that you see who are dual-threat quarterbacks, listed as dual-threat quarterbacks, who can kind of run and kind of throw. I mean, he can really, really run. Extremely expl- – as explosive as anybody since Matt Jones at Arkansas for quarterback. Now – KJ's a little bit different runner. You know, he's more of a strider, 6'3", 240, move a pile kind of guy. Hornsby is just super fast. And I think that a lot of this, you know, like we're going to see how these guys work out in terms of like, you know, just getting synced up with the wide receivers. I think that's a big part of it. You know, there's some concern over holding the ball, but how much of that is just early whistle sacks also. But I think we're going to see as these guys um, – you know, go on, they're going to sync up better with the wide receivers. And I can remember going back to, you know, the spring of 2010 with Ryan Mallett before he ever started as a quarterback. And he was terrible for a good part of the spring. Sorry, Ryan, if you're listening, but not very impressive. And then one day, he wasn't. One day, he had his best practice. He had his best I can't. I don't know if they like scrimmaged or if it was just like a lot of team. But I remember being at practice and thinking, man, he's hitting everything. And from then on out, he was good. It was like the light just came on for him. And, you know, that'll happen for them too. You know, with KJ, he's actually proven in a game. You know, like I've said many times, I don't want to go over the Missouri game, but Arkansas goes into that game up 10 in the fourth quarter. He throws – he leads two touchdown drives, completes a two-point conversion. They score 15 points in the fourth quarter with a 10-point lead going in, and they lose the game. I don't know if I would put that on KJ Jefferson. So – He's, he's proven a bit in a game. You know, Malik Hornsby, again, not outstanding passing numbers. Led the team in rushing. I think he probably could have had even more rushing yards without an early whistle. Lucas Coley, I'm impressed with Lucas Coley. Now, I don't know how tall he is. I probably would guess he's about six foot tall, so not ex- exceedingly tall. Uh, he's elusive. He's under control. He's calm. He's those with good velocity. Even where the drill were there, like – you know, get the ball to these four receivers across the field as fast as possible, and they pick the ball up and, they, and they're throwing all the way across. He looks more under control than anybody and completes the passes. I mean, he just looked calm, collected. I think that he might have a future at Arkansas. It's very early, but I like what I've seen early on from him. Cade Renfro throws with a lot of velocity, one or five, 13 yards. Did not see Jacob Switzer in the scrimmage, and he has, as of today, entered the transfer portal, another walk-on quarterback, freshman. But Jacob Switzer has entered the transfer portal. So that's where things are. Sorry for the technical difficulties. I have no idea what happened. Everything just completely froze. We'll try to get to your questions on the other uh, on the other one. Now, for recruiting, we thought there might be some good news for Arkansas uh, on Friday with um, Faison Wilson. 
but didn't happen. That decision has been pushed back. 6'4", 210 wide receiver, four-star recruit, number 400, excuse me, 311 player nationally on the composite, 45 wide receiver, 42 in Texas. Uh, he was down to Arkansas and Alabama announcing his decision, but that decision has been pushed off for now. I mean, it has been pushed off. Uh, they did recently, the most recent commitment is from Miles Rouser, who we, uh, we, I don't know if we talked about Miles, but 6'1", 185, number 131 overall prospect in the country, four-star, number nine safety prospect in the country, number three player in Michigan. So Arkansas has got some good connections with him. This is a huge pickup to be able to go, you know, that far away outside your normal recruiting zone and get another safety, like, the number of safeties that Arkansas is recruiting at a high level is impressive. No wonder they're at a three-two-six. No wonder that's the preferred alignment. Get three safeties out of the field and a nickel. Another great addition. I mean, it's been one year after another. Like, like Arkansas went a long stretch without getting a four-star safety. Um, I guess if you want to count – if you want to count Monteric Brown, although he's at cornerback, but he came to Arkansas as a safety. But aside from him, it has been a long stretch, and they've gotten, uh, they've gotten. Now, Joe Fouché and I think Miles Mason maybe have, were four stars on other recruiting services. They weren't composite four stars, but Jalen Catalan was a composite four star in 2019. Miles Slusher in 2020, and then Miles Rouser now in the class of 2022. 2021, did they get one? Am I forgetting somebody in 2021? They got some good safeties in 2021. Like, Jaden Johnson wasn't a four-star. He was a pretty well-regarded guy. But Jaden Johnson, to me, is a very intimidating-looking safety and really rolling with the second bunch already. I would say he's a second-team safety right now as a true freshman early enrollee. Big 6'2", 200-pound-looking guy. I think he's going to end up being a nice addition. So safety recruiting has really been strong these last few years now. After, for a while, it just seemed like Arkansas could get a good safety. I mean, like, it feels like you go back, and there's been some guys that have been okay. But, like, since Tremaine Thomas, where he said, this guy's really good, you know. And Tremaine wasn't even drafted. You may have, you may say, go, you go back further than that, maybe to Kenny Hamlin. So that's where things are right now. Spring football, we'll talk a little bit about that when we get into your questions and stuff, some of my thoughts on that. Uh, baseball team uh, won the series against Auburn 2-1, 6-5 and 6-5 the last two days, 10 innings on Saturday. Lost the game on Thursday 2-1. to one. And Tuesday they pick up again and play uh, UALR, Little Rock, April 6th on Tuesday and on April 7th at 4. 6.30 on Tuesday, 4 o'clock on Wednesday against UALR. And then the weekend series at Ole Miss, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So that's where things are with Arkansas baseball. Arkansas is 22-4, and 7-2 and in conference play, 4-3 and three at home, 5-1 and one on the road. Arkansas currently, by the way, ranked in football, recruiting 13th nationally since the Miles Rouser edition. So they have three four-star prospects, Miles Rouser, Andrew Chambly, offensive lineman for Maumel, 6'6", 285, and Rashad Debinion, 5'10", 185, running back out of Ellenwood, Georgia. Good start to the class so far. Fourth in the SEC right now. How many commits do they have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight commits right now. All right. I'm going to go to my phone here to get these uh, questions from the last stream before we jump into the other ones. Make sure everything's going smoothly here. Looks like it. All right. Larry Vineyard says, don't overpay Musclehead. What would be over hair, overpaying him? I mean, like, he's pretty well proven. He's two years in, so you automatic like, people complain all the time about coaches getting contracts after two years, but after two years, you decide if you're going to keep them or you're not. And if you're going to keep them, then they get a contract extension automatically. I mean, it, it's across college sports. It's like that. So, Musselman's going to get a deal. He deserves one. I think it'll probably be six years, take him to 2027, which is what NATO's has. Um, 
around 20 million. That would put you a little bit ahead of what Nate Oates is and a 5 million or so buyout. That's like $3.3 million a year. Now, you start talking about paying somebody $4 million a year in basketball, you're, you're talking about getting into the top 10 play, uh, coaches in the country, like where Bill Self was last year. And he signed a lifetime extension, so he may be up there now. But that's where you're, you know, that's the territory you're talking about. And if you look at the top 10 coaches in the country, like I think eight of them, seven or eight of them have been at least to a national championship game, you know or a Final Four at least. And Musselman hasn't quite been there yet. I think he'll get there. Maybe you, maybe you project it and say, hey, we think this is where this is going. We want to lock him up. But from every indication from Hunter Juracek, he wants to get the deal done. Um, Eric Musselman wants to get the deal done. And his wife wants to get the deal done. As he referred, his two bosses want it done, and he wants it done. So everybody seems to be on the same page. Momentum rolling in the right direction. Get the contract done. Get recruiting going. I mean, you, you have to get it done for recruiting <laughs> these days. You have to. Vineyard says, must won't get any 22, 22 but pinion. Why, why are you so negative, Larry? There's no reason to be negative right now. How's the transfer portal affecting in-state recruiting? I mean, you have to pull from both. You have to pull from both. But Darian Ford is a possibility. Khalil Ware is a possibility. I think Nick Smith might be a bigger long shot just based on what I'm hearing, but – I don't know that they're not going to get anybody else in 2022. Darren Aldridge, Biddy Lyon. What am I lying about? Why is my nose growing? Garrett Bernard just laughs. Let's see. Who do you think would be the best get for Arkansas, says Aaron Anderson? I, I'm not sure. I think there are a lot of great options. I, I think of the guys that we just talked about there, like you'd, you'd be pretty happy, I think, to get all of them, right? Stephen Pipe says, I saw where Pinson out of Missouri has Arkansas in his top four. Yes. Some say maybe top two-ish. Keenan Camp says, do we keep the guy out of Magnolia? We talked about Darren Ford just a little bit there. And to be honest with you, I don't know. I think I think there might be a, a pretty good shot. I think I might I – don't, I don't know if I mentioned him a minute ago. Uh, but Darren Ford, obviously, you know, like top 50 type player nationally. Combo guard out of Magnolia. Matt Bohannon says, Trey, which position group has been a pleasant surprise in the spring? Which one might concern you? A pleasant surprise? Hmm. I mean, I don't know if anybody's been a surprise. It's hard to say just because there's so many returning starters. I mean, you have – like 12 guys who started at least four games on offense last year and 10 guys on defense who started at least four games. That's a lot of players returning with a lot of starting experience. So it's hard to say somebody's like just surprising. Uh, I do think that there's enough talent at defensive end that they should have some success there. What's crazy at defensive end, like you look at like on the right side where you want your speedier guys. You've got Jashad Stewart who only played in eight games, mostly on special teams last year as a true freshman who had 17 sacks as a high school senior. Um, you have Zach Williams, who had 17 sacks as a high school senior and is entering his junior year. And you have Matteo Soli, who has 22.5 sacks as a senior in high school. That's a lot of sacks in high school. Between those guys, they have one sack total. And that's more on Williams and more on Soli because Stewart hadn't been there that long. But Stewart was playing, rolling with the first group uh, the last two practices, including in the scrimmage. He was with the first team at right end. So I think there's a lot of potential there. There's talent there, but the results have not reflected that, right? So I think that's one reason you bring in Jermiah Ashley, who was a defensive end in college, all Big 12 performer at Kansas, been six years at Tulsa now. So I think maybe that's why you bring him in. You know, they're widening the splits. They're They're, they're – they're trying to do different things to get more pressure on the quarterback. That's all the defensive linemen talk about it. You know, Isaiah Nichols talking about getting 300 pounds, but also getting to the quarterback more, you know, at defensive nose. So I think that they have the potential there. And, you know, when you also look at Dorian Gerald, who has been injured most of the last two years, you know, he had two and a, he had two sacks on Saturday in the scrimmage again, early whistle sacks. He had a TFL, you know, Eric Gregory, 
might be as talented as they have on the defensive line at defensive end, but he's, you know, more six four three hundred. You know, he's a he's a big end on the left side. So I I might say that position group, I think they have a lot of potential. Um they've had potential though. So maybe them and what did you did you ask most disappointing? Let's see, what'd you say? Which one might concern you? I mean, quarterback, there's reason for concern. I, th- I think there's reason for optimism, but it's the most important position on the field, and you never really know till they get out there. So I might say quarterback is still a concern. Adrian Jones says college basketball is getting like the NBA with players transferring. Adrian Jones says UCLA went from first four to final four. They did. Brian Henley says, what was the news on Faze and Wilson? Just pushing it off. We'll see. Josh Harper says, must getting a raise? Question mark. Yes, he will. Daniel Elliott says, question. Hogs will be underdogs in week two against Texas and Fayetteville, but I, am I crazy to think we win this game? Sark is good, coach, but they won't be clicking on all cylinders that early and breaking a new quarterback. I was talking with somebody about that maybe yesterday, I think. I think if you're going to catch Texas – the year to catch them is when they have a coaching change, a lot of newness early in the season, a new quarterback. As you said, you know, all those reasons I think are make it good timing. Now, if Arkansas had Felipe Franks coming back, if they had Felipe Franks coming back, I'd be like, yes, they're going to beat Texas in week two. But there's so much unknown with Arkansas quarterback situation. You know, these guys look great in practice and stuff, but you don't know what kind of gamesmanship – are they a game? Are they a big play guy at the end of the game? Do they want the ball in their hands? You know, all of those things are question marks. And we've seen KJ do well against Missouri, but this is Texas. There's a there's better defense, most likely. You know, Missouri didn't have a stellar defense. So I think those are all questions you have to ask at quarterback. But on Texas's end, probably a good situation for Arkansas with with so much newness. So we'll see. Sark's been a head coach before. Texas recruits at a high level, but Texas has, you know, really been the consummate underachievers as a program with so much talent right there in their backyard. Scott says, Fletcher says, love to get Pinson. Better sign must long term. Not sure what happened, but I'll be back soon. That was me. All right, let's jump into these other questions now on our new stream here. Again, sorry about the technical difficulty earlier. Not sure what happened. Nathan Moore says, Trey, you got to upgrade that Cricket Wireless Internet, my brother. So I get 100 – or excuse me, I get 1,000 up and 1,000 down megabits per second. We're okay on Internet speed. It was actually the Mac. The Internet was working fine. It was just like my mouse stopped working and the computer shut down. So I'm not sure what happened. Doesn't really happen very often with uh, with this computer, but it wasn't the internet. Tyrant Alt says, what happened to phase on Wilson committing this weekend? I think, I think we kind of covered that. Randall File says, we big Suey from Appleton, Wisconsin. Sam seems concerned over the quarterbacks. What are you saying? I mean, I think there's got to be reason to be concerned at quarterback until uh, everything shakes out. But, again, that was a beautiful throw from K.J. Jefferson that was completely wiped out due to an illegal lineman downfield penalty. And I think there's just, you know, getting in sync. I would say Arkansas's strongest point on the defensive side of the ball is their secondary. And, um, you know, I think that that probably plays a role. It's like who can who, – somebody's going to win. If, if the quarterbacks go out there and just light up the defense, then everybody's worried about the defense in the spring, right? So I'm not, like, saying, like, that Arkansas should be concerned, but um, – it's just a position you never really know about. Now, would it be great to see KJ out there knowing he's not going to get hit, uh, going you know seventeen of nineteen passing or something? Sure, that would be a lot better. But concerned about quarterback? I don't know if I'd say I'm concerned. Optimistic? I don't know if I would say I'm optimistic yet. I just kind of wait and see. Unfortunately. Brian Easton says, get these negative people off here. <laughs> Terry Trotter Gain says, a lot of male Karens out there today. <laughs> Ethan Malone says, hearing good things about Coley again, and it's not just enough time for him to learn that. Is it just – I mean, like, so, Ethan, I've said this on quarterback before, but, like, you have virtually, uh, at this level, zero chance of starting as a quarterback if you enroll – at a normal time as a freshman. But as an early enrollee, you do give yourself a chance. 
So he has a, a chance to maybe compete if they're like, wow, this guy's just really coming. He just He's there every day. I think he has done some really good things. I think he throws the ball well. I think he looks calm, poised, composed, whatever you want to call it. He doesn't look like a guy that's just like, you know, he just looks steady and then and natural that back there. So I, I think those are all encouraging signs. Not the tallest. He's listed at 6'2". I haven't seen him up close because it's COVID and the quarterbacks practice way over here and I have to stay right at the 15 yards. So we get like 50 minutes to an hour of practice and all the scrimmage, but – too far away, but I can, you know, I see him standing next to, you know, uh, Malik Cornsby, who's listed at 6'2", or John Stephen Jones, who's listed at 5'11". I don't know if John Stephen Jones is 5'11". And he's, you know, somewhere in between those guys on height. But he's also elusive, and that's going to help. Brandon Teresa Cohen says, how are we looking at tailback? I know we have Smith. I'm talking about his backup. I think before all said and done, I could I could see Rocket Sanders being the backup. Now, Rocket had some – you know, he's a freshman, early enrollee. Uh, I think twice they fumbled the ball at the mesh point um, just from miscommunication, not knowing, you know, uh, timing, all those things are issues. But Sanders has done some really good things as a runner. Um he did take a good shot from from Jalen Catalan, who also took a good shot from Hudson Henry. But uh, there were some licks flying around on Saturday. But uh, I think that he has a chance to end up being the second guy. Now, T.J. Hammonds had a 73-yard touchdown run. That's certainly notable. And T.J.'s kind of been a guy that has flashed here and there but just has not been consistent. Uh, Josh Oglesby is a lot smaller but has near world-class speed. I mean, he's an All-American sprinter at Arkansas. Uh, but he's only 176 pounds. He's not a very big guy. So he's a guy that maybe you do some different things with. But I think when we're coming down to it's third and two, I think it makes more sense to have a guy like Rocket Sanders who's 6'2", 220. And then, of course, A.J. Green. Uh, Dominic Sanders ran the ball really well. What do you have, like 11 carries for 46 yards and I think a touchdown? Uh, but I thought that he ran the ball really well on Saturday. And he was a guy that I was kind of thinking, maybe let's start looking at this guy over at linebacker. But uh, if he's going to run the ball like he did on Saturday, then keep him at running back. So that's kind of where I think things are shaking out there. Andre MC Facebook gave me another warning. I'm not going to sit back and let <laughs> – I'm not sure what you're talking about. Steve Welton says, think Musselman will make us consistent. Yes, I think so. I mean, things have been pretty – I mean, the two-year your sample size is pretty darn good, right? Must will get more than pay for himself. Winning puts money in the program. He's a winner. When you have a great coach, keep him. We should have learned this by now. I mean, when you look at everything Musselman has done, he gets he gets he gets checks by everything. I mean, social media presence, yes. Experience, yes. It's so hard to mesh those two things when you like an older coach. Not that he's like old. What is Musselman? Fifty six. He's not that old, especially energy wise. But a guy who has a lot of experience like that, a lot of times there's a trade-off with, you know, just like getting it from, you know, being willing to change, you know, the analytics and the things that they do of that nature. Um, his social media interactions are top-notch nationally at the top on Twitter interactions. Um, those things, that, that combination is hard to find. And he has all that experience. He's active. He's aggressive. I mean, he's one of these wake up early types of guys, run when you're on the treadmill, work out every day type of guys. A um, lot of energy. So I think that you really, I mean, it's a really nice combination to have with Musselman when you consider all those factors. And he's a proven winner. I mean, he's done it at Nevada at a very high level, and he's doing it at Arkansas now and really eclipsing what he did, you know, in his four years at Nevada. Um, you know, in terms of the peak, anyway, by getting to the Elite Eight. So, MP Ritz says, keep the must bus rolling. Yes, sir. Brandon Teresa Cohen says, thanks for your info. Love your show. Appreciate that. I work out of state, so you're my go to guys. Appreciate that, Brandon Teresa Cohen. Marquise Martin says, Trey, do you think Moses Moody leaves for the NBA this year? I think so. Now, I don't think Moses did himself any favors in the NCAA tournament. I think it's possible that he was a little bit worn out. But this is a guy that's been talked about as a lottery pick possibility the whole time. I don't know if he's a lottery pick or not. I mean, I'd, obviously, I'm like you. I don't think that he had a great, um, a great NCAA tournament. I think he was the focus of a lot of teams. Again, could have been fatigue, freshman, hitting a wall, maybe uh, all that stuff, you know. But he's a guy that – 
you know, basically led Arkansas or was at the top in just about every single category. So I think that he's – I don't know that – I don't know that Moses is going to do himself um, this – like make himself like a top – pick or anything like that by coming back another year and the NBA drafts a lot on potential and what is he six seven six six what is he six 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 I guess uh, but he's just got a seven foot wingspan um, I mean he's a good looking player with a lot of potential and he can he can stroke it so Ivy Green says remember my name is pronounced Avi yeah Avi 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 or Avi just having that I at the end is it an I or an E? Is it long or short? And Coach Musselman hastily – Coach Musselman, Musselman hastily – like if I came on here after an Arkansas loss and acted like Musselman, it'd be to be like Marquise Martin says, Trey, do you think Moses Moody leaves for the NBA this year? I don't know. Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. That's how, that's, how, that's how this would go if it was Musselman. <laughs> David Carr says, any worries losing Smith, Moody, Tate with what we have coming back and these guys coming in? Seems like a lot of scoring to fill. I mean, yeah. Yeah, a lot of scoring. I mean, you, you teach these guys about scoring and you go out there every day and practice and score. It's like three guys can score. <laughs> My best muscle. I haven't, I haven't rehearsed that yet, so I just kind of – impromptu again but yeah i mean like losing those guys i mean it just depends on who they bring in the transfer market i mean kk robinson we know can fill it up debo if he gets his shot going i mean that's the one thing about debo like he's a little loose with the handles he can tighten that up a little bit but he's got the ability he's got the athletic ability i mean we've seen it pure energy ex explosive let's just get that shot polish that shot up a little bit where you know he can spot up from three and knock it down. That's what – I mean, he should be – I don't want to say what he should be doing. He knows what he should be doing. I don't have to tell Devo Davis what he should be doing, but a lot of three-point shots. <laughs> he knows that. Kevin Gill says, will we ever see Arkansas on the FedEx Forum versus Memphis and Hog fans flood Beale Street again? I mean, there's been some some talk about that um, with Penny Hardaway, I think. I haven't heard anything in a while. Gary Dermott says – does Arkansas starting pitching concern you against elite teams like Ole Miss or Vandy? You're so much better off talking about that with somebody else. I, I covered a little bit of baseball stuff, but that's that's Curtis Wilkerson territory. Matt Bounce says, Mike Wood's looking good this spring. Cannot wait to watch him. I mean, it, it, here's the deal. If, if Mike Woods improves half as much as he did from the previous year to last year, then, I mean – He's going to be pretty good and may may have a shot, actually. Probably the most underrated wide receiver in the country, possibly. Woodsville on, U Woodville on YouTube, yeah, I'll check it out. I saw their last one where they went to uh, Top Golf. Yep. All right, everybody, I have no idea how long we've gone because we basically did this in two different segments. But I want to remind you one more time, if you have not followed the page on YouTube, please do so. If you have not liked the page on YouTube, uh, excuse me, if you're not subscribed to the page on YouTube, go ahead and do that. Throw us a like as well. Hit the notification bell so you're notified anytime we upload new videos. Also, follow the page on Facebook Live. I think we have, we're somewhere north of 80,000 follows, which is great. We want to get more, obviously. And uh, throw us a like on the video. Share the content with somebody you think might like it. If you listen on Apple Podcasts and you haven't thrown us a review, say something nice about the show and take a moment and throw us a five-star rating. We would love to have that from you. Also available on Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere else you can think of to find your favorite podcast. Curtis Wilkerson, taking it easy this week. Needs to. Did a great job. If you guys did not follow Curtis Wilkerson. If you don't follow him on Twitter, first of all, you should. But just the work that he did from, you know, March 11th, I guess, is when he left. But covering the SEC tournament, going up to Indianapolis, covering the entire uh, uh, NCAA basketball tournament for Arkansas games, just did a fantastic job for us and has been a wonderful addition as our primary hoops and recruiting expert at Hog Sports. So follow Curtis at Curtis Wilkerson underscore on Twitter and be sure to read his content at HAWGsports.com and sign up. It's $1 right now for your first month if you haven't signed up at hogsports.com, H-A-W-G-sports.com. All right, everybody, appreciate you for, for joining the show. Again, pro sorry for the technical difficulties in the middle, but hopefully that won't happen again. This has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, and we'll catch you next time.